working really hard to heal myself to become strong again so that I can come back to this platform that I hold so dear <sighs> doing a really terrible job not crying dad I'm sorry I want to get my life back. And I don't want to feel like this. For what? In the description below this video, you're going to find a link where you can learn more about the Spirit Awakening Foundation that was founded by one of my biggest heroes and spiritual advisors, Akuyo Graham public thank you to you because this woman helped me so much she has this grace and love where even just one conversation just just really challenges you to look at things through the scope of love and of only rehabilitating and of only loving through it. And I'm grateful for the powerful women in my life that call to love and that call to everything light and healing. And I'm just, I'm so grateful for her and her work that she is doing to really bring effective healing is important. It's an unusual type of work. Um, and I have spoken before um, for Voices of the Unheard, where you're giving voice to those who have been silenced. And I just want to take this time and like shine a little light on something good. And uh, I've been supporting this amazing foundation for most of my adult life. They help kids that grew up in tough situations to reach their dreams and to change their lives. All of my AdSense from this video will be donated to the Spirit Awakening and earmarked for their Spirit Home Project that will construct a safe place for those kids to come seek guidance and betterment after their release from juvenile boot camps. I appeal you to please take something from my hard lesson learned. Hey there, cats and kittens. My name is Alonda Carter and I am the Recovering Hunbot. I create anti-MLM, that's anti-multi-level marketing videos here on YouTube. And on occasion, I dip my toes into true crime. But if you really think about it, isn't multi-level marketing criminal? Well, today's video, it's not exactly MLM, but there is a relationship. Last June, Tutty Westbrook released her video titled Breaking My Silence. This video was her basically saying that she was manipulated by Jeffree Star and Shane Dawson into making a video about James Charles. If you don't know all about the Bi Sisters, you know, drama that ensued, you can look that stuff up. But it's basically her coming out and saying, this is why I did that. And it's not because I wanted to, it's because these people got into my head and that's why I made the video. Well, what I found really interesting about this, someone who subscribes to me asked me if I thought Tati was involved in a cult. And I really didn't put a lot of research into it at the time. I just kind of looked around and I saw some red flags. And I basically let the person know like, well, I see some things that it's just making me go, huh, interesting. And I kind of put that on the back burner and I figured I'd get to it when I get to it. And right now I'm getting to it. And this happens to coincide with more drama that Tati is involved with, with all these lawsuits. If you haven't heard about that and want to know about that, just look it up because I'm not going to rehash all of that. 
but I'm getting back to her video back in June because it was in that video that Tati basically promoted an organization that has helped her. And that's what I found interesting when I started digging into it. It's like, okay, well, what is this? Where do these beliefs come from? And when I do research, what I typically do is like, okay, I'm looking at a person like, okay, who did they learn from? Who did that person learn from? Where did this come from? And I keep following the trail. And that's what I did with this is I followed the trail of where is all of this from? And I wound up in the pool of new thought. If you don't know what new thought is, this video is going to provide you kind of a historical overview. I'm not going to be able to get into all the ins and outs and nitty gritty based on it because there's a lot. But what I am going to do is provide you insight with people who are involved in the new thought movement and how it all leads to what Tati promoted in her video. Now, if you have ever been involved in multi-level marketing, you know that personal development is intimately entwined with MLM because that's always part of something you have to do. You have to be working on yourself. And me as a recovering Hunbot, I'm always very curious when it comes to personal development. And I do tend to give it the side eye because I've been through all of that and dove into it. I mean, like my entire body dove into it. That's how deep I was in it. And typically when people are in multi-level marketing, they get really super involved in it too because it's part of the DNA. The contents of this video is based on my research, my experience, and my opinions. Please do not send any hate to anyone who follows Tati or to Tati or to anybody involved in multi-level marketing or any multi-level marketing companies or anything that I'm speaking about in this video. That's not the point. I am just peeling back, you know, the layers and sharing with you what I found. And as always, please do your own research because I'm really, I'm scratching the surface on so much that's involved with this, but it's enough so that you have something to chew on. Also, please be kind to each other and be kind to me in the comment section because really the world could just, you know, go for a little bit more kindness. There's no reason to be nasty. So in this video, I'm providing kind of an historical overview of how Spiritual Awakening Foundation came into being in terms of going back and looking at how did it evolve? Where did these thoughts and beliefs come from? All of it, so that you know, is based on the New Thought Movement. And that's what we're going to be uncovering is looking at how did New Thought start and some of the key players that are involved in it specifically as it relates to multi-level marketing. And then I'm going to go into some about the Spiritual Awakening Foundation itself and their, their belief system. The New Thought Religious Movement began in the US during the mid 19th century. Due to the variety, it is a challenge to synthesize the belief system. In general, New Thought teaches health and prosperity can be harnessed through God. According to its teachings, thoughts and attitudes shape the world. However, much of what constitutes New Thought can be seen today in personal development content. Personal development is a cornerstone in the multi-level marketing industry. As a former Hunbot who spent hours reading and listening to personal development, when I find anything related to this topic, my ears perk up and I do tend to give it a side eye, mainly because of the relationship it has to toxic positivity. Toxic positivity can be defined as being excessively happy and optimistic no matter the situation. Toxic positivity denies and invalidates the wide range of human emotions. There is a tendency to always see every situation in a positive light because you don't wanna focus on anything negative. Focusing on the negative brings more negativity into your life. And since you create your own reality, your reality should be filled with what you want, happiness, wealth, and health. If something bad happens, then it's up to you to see the good in it and find the lesson. Taken to the extreme, which happens in multi-level marketing, you must project the life you want and act as if you already have what you want, financial freedom and time freedom. Phineas Quimby, who was born February 16, 1802, is usually the person cited as the earliest proponent of new thought. 
you can also refer to him as father of new thought. For years, he worked as a clockmaker. From an early age, he suffered from tuberculosis, which is one of the biggest killers in the 19th century. Doctors used cod liver oil, opium, or calomel to treat the disease. Calomel consisted of mercury and chlorine, which was prescribed to Quimby, and he consumed it in large quantities. Because the amount he used, eventually he suffered from mercury poisoning, which caused his teeth to fall out and rot. Quimby was in a lot of pain, and he lost faith in medical doctors who continued to overprescribe drugs to him. A friend of his suggested that he use the ancient practice of vigorous horseback riding, but because he felt so bad, he decided he would do the next best thing, and that was riding in his carriage. Although he found it difficult to raise his whip, he did so, and by the time he restabled his horse, he felt more invigorated. During this time, across the pond, mesmerism was all the rage in Europe. The German physician, Franz Anton Mesmer, theorized an invisible energy courses through all living things, which he referred to as animal magnetism. Mesmer believed that this animal magnetism could be manipulated to help and heal patients by unblocking where the flow of energy had been interrupted. Mesmer would practice this by sitting knee to knee with his patients and looking directly into their eyes and then would press his hands along their body. Charles Poyen was a student of Mesmer and it is he who popularized mesmerism. Poyen healed people, diagnosed diseases, found lost objects, and also read minds. He moved to the U.S. from France. He collected followers, and one of them was Phineas Quimby. Quimby left his job as a watchmaker to follow Poyen so that he could learn the art of mesmerism. Quimby became rather accomplished at healing people with mesmerism, but he noticed that doing so relied less on the mesmerism technique he used and more with the beliefs of the person in question he was attempting to heal. He came to believe that his personal suffering was due to believing he would never be able to get better. To heal then meant he had to shift his thinking and choose new and different thoughts. Quimby believed that illness originated in the mind and that we can choose to change how we think and therefore heal ourselves with our thoughts. Mary Baker Eddy, another new thought leader, developed Christian science. It is recognized that Quimby had influence on her thoughts about healing. However, her belief system was rooted in Christianity. At one time, she had poor health, but attributed her physical regeneration to spiritual revelation. In 1875, she published Science and Health, which she said was spiritually inspired. This book became the foundation for the basic tenets of the Christian Science Church. Wallace Deloy Waddles was a major member of the New Thought Movement and played a key role in making the message of Law of Attraction popular. In 1910, he published the book, The Science of Getting Rich. He wrote monographs and gave lectures focusing on how our thoughts influence everything in our lives including our health and career. Probably one of his most significant contributions to the law of attraction was creative visualization. This is when you imagine in all the detail exactly what you want your life to be. This type of visualization remains popular today in the circles of law of attraction and also within multi-level marketing training methodology. Oliver Napoleon Hill was a popular journalist, lecturer, and self-help author. His book, Think and Grow Rich, is one of the mainstays of personal development in multi-level marketing. His book, Law of Success, includes the principles of the laws of attraction. He believed people could create their own reality going from rags to riches. However, much of what Hill wrote about was entirely made up, such as his meeting with Andrew Carnegie. There is no evidence that this meeting ever took place. It has also come to light that Hill was involved in various scams and was a serial swindler. One scam he ran involved buying lumber on credit 
and then selling it for cash, but he never paid his creditors. Much of what Hill did was sell people on his ideas being transformational. What Hill taught remains within the law of attraction community, specifically when it comes to manifesting your reality by focusing and believing that your power is limitless, therefore your reality will change to match your beliefs. Personal development gurus like Tony Robbins and countless others, some well known and others not so much, continue to leverage the ideas Hill wrote about as if they are fact when they were born from someone who deceived others and lied to them. All of these gurus have one thing in common. They are really good storytellers. Christian science developed in the 19th century, which was founded by Mary Eddy Baker. In 1879, with only 26 followers, she founded the Church of Christ Scientists. Then in 1894, she founded the first Church of Christ Scientists. The church built in Boston, Massachusetts is known as the Mother Church. It became the fastest growing religion in the U.S. This church is known for its newspaper, the Christian Science Monitor. Adherents believe that reality is spiritual and the material world is an illusion. Disease then is a mental error and not physical. To followers of this religion, the sick should be treated with prayer rather than with medicine. Christian scientists do not avoid all medical care, but tend to seek it out only when the law requires them to do so. Between the 1880s and 1990s, avoiding medical treatment led to the deaths of some adherents and their children. There are a few cases in which people were convicted of manslaughter or neglect. The Agape Spiritual Center is a transdenominational congregation founded by Michael Bernard Beckwith a former Methodist and now a New Thought minister who was ordained in religious science in 1985. Beckwith has claimed that he healed a woman of kidney disease through prayer, but provides no documentation of this. Maybe you have heard of the movie, The Secret. Beckwith was featured in it. Religious science, also known as Science of Mind, was founded in 1927 by Ernest Holmes. The basic tenets are that the physical form is created by the universal mind or God, which manifests the dominant belief system of all living people. According to Holmes, the universal law of cause and effect are operating throughout the world. Agape Spiritual Center includes Agape University, where you can take courses such as the physics of prayer, meditation, and the evolution of consciousness, invisible supply, universal laws governing spiritual living, prosperity, plentitude, and infinite possibilities. Also, you can take the roots of Agape, which provides insight into the new thought movement where you can learn about self-awareness and evolving consciousness the life visioning process, meditation principles and practices, mysticism, the practice and the mystical, spiritual liberation, prayer warrior, and the answer is you. According to the Agate Spiritual Center, there are seven spiritual practices, meditation, affirmative prayer, life visioning, sacred service, spiritual study, spiritual community, and tithing. In the June 30th, 2003 issue of the Christian Science Sentinel, Akayo Graham's worship home is said to be the Agape International Center of Truth, which is a Church of Religious Science congregation in Los Angeles. The article goes on to say that Graham learned about Mary Baker Eddy, the founder of Christian Science, as she studied religious pioneers. According to the website, the Spirit Awakening Foundation is an arts-based nonprofit dedicated to helping underserved youth and children in the juvenile justice system realize their value, worth, and spirituality. Since 1995, we have been teaching the unheard, the power of positive and productive expression through creative writing, visual arts, improvisation, and meditation. They offer writing, creative arts, and a mentorship program to the underserved youth. As I was looking around on the website, I came across the Isalan Leadership Retreat. Isalan is a nonprofit retreat center in Big Sur, California, that is an alternative education center that hosts personal growth workshops. Beginning in the 1960s, 
Isalon played a key role in the human potential movement, which was part of the counterculture. The human potential movement in general believes that by developing the human potential, we can experience an exceptional life and the net effect will be positive social change. Richard Price is a co-founder of Isalon who studied with Ranish, also known as Osha. Ranish is the founder of the Ranish movement. Ranish preached a mixture of Eastern mysticism, Western philosophy, and free love. New Thought overall is a loosely affiliated group of authors, philosophers, personal development, self-proclaimed gurus, and religious denominations who share a similar set of beliefs that are related to metaphysics, positive thinking, the law of attraction, healing, life force, creative visualization, and personal power. Overall, there is a belief in a central intelligence with divine thought being the source of goodness. The general assertion is that sickness originates in the mind and right thinking can heal it. People who espouse the overall belief system are a dime a dozen. You can find them everywhere. Just look at any list of personal development books that are must reads in multi-level marketing. They'll be there keeping you believing that you have to keep working on your thoughts so you have success. This is a great way to reduce critical thinking, shut out any criticism, and keeping people busy so that they continue to spend money even when they haven't made a dime. So is Tati promoting a cult? Is she promoting toxic positivity? I'm not so sure about the cult. I typically consider the bite model when I look at a group and see you know, how many boxes it ticks off. Tati has millions of followers, and if 10% of them get involved with what she says has changed her life, then that's a lot of people who, in my opinion, can become open to multi-level marketing. From what I can tell, there is a high degree of likelihood that this group exploits people financially and restricts leisure time and activities. There are many other aspects of behavior control, such as promoting dependence and obedience. In terms of information control, I would say there is a high degree of likelihood that the group withholds and distorts information and does not want you to interact with anyone who is critical. And I would say there is insider versus outsider doctrine. Emotional control, well, love bombing is built into that, that oh, how fabulous you are, just making people feel really super good. I'd say they probably teach that the group and the group's beliefs are the road to happiness. Most likely, there are other components of the bite model at work. And like I said earlier, I've only scratched the surface. I will say that I do have a problem that someone with a platform as large as Tati's promoting any sort of spiritual enterprise. People watch Tati for her makeup tutorials. This group that she supports targets young, vulnerable people, which to me raises a red flag. On the surface, it might seem like it's doing a good thing, but looking back and how this new thought movement developed and how much of the teachings are interconnected with multi-level marketing, I can't help but feel uncomfortable and question the overall intent. Overall, these organizations are businesses, and we know that when vulnerable people are targeted, a lot of damage can occur emotionally, psychologically, and financially. How people are influenced by Tati and what she is promoting worries me. There is something about it that just makes me go, hmm, and my spidey sense just goes off. In my opinion, anyone with a very large audience should be very aware of what they promote. And just like with multi-level marketing, overall, people don't do their own research. And I am pretty much guessing that people don't look into the historical development of these different spiritual type centers. They just kind of accept whatever they are told as fact because it sounds good. It's comforting. It gives you an answer and something to strive for because you can work on yourself and the thoughts you have. This type of doctrine states that you can attract success or wealth or anything that you wish. 
your personal faith in your ability to create the life you desire sustains the overall belief system. And you know who is making the money? It's the self-proclaimed religious business and spiritual gurus who are all repackaging what others have said before them. They are the ones who can have a dangerous impact on anyone who is vulnerable. And those who are vulnerable can take what these people say to heart as being truth. In my opinion, it's dangerous and toxic. Is it possible that Tati never looked into the development or the philosophy that she promotes to her followers and that she believes is, you know, helpful? Is it possible that what she promotes could be harmful to people, especially right now in the pandemic? Do you think it's possible that someone getting involved with what Tati promoted that that could help them become open to multi-level marketing. Do you find this type of organization to be problematic? Why or why not? Let me know what your thoughts are. And remember, you're beautiful and I love you. 